But I just thought to myself, I just want to do something different. Like I was very aware. I'm like, always a kid. My mom hated it. Like I'm always a kid who always asking questions. Why? Shut up. <laughs> why? Shut up. Stop asking. Shut up. Come on. Can't why? You just follow. Can you just follow? And she knew I've always been that yeah. way. Always been that yeah. way. And I remember even trying to get into the media industry. I lied to my parents. I said, um, I'm going to do film and media. Why are you doing that? I want to get into advertising. Okay, yeah. advertising. Yeah, yeah. You understand that? <laughs> I was trying to be a filmmaker. I was trying to. Yeah. So I was hustling. And, yeah. and for me, the, 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 the proof for me was to show my parents mm -hmm. without telling them what I wanted to do. Nigerians operate on being shown value. 100%. You have to show them the value. Yeah. So if you're trying to tell them, they can't no. imagine it. No. For anyone who's tuning into this episode, we are trying out a new setup <laughs> that has never happened before. This is very innovative, by the way. Um, but I have tried to make it work okay. given okay. the constraints that we have. We're going in. Um, but I am excited to have you on the show. I think um, I did say before we hit record mm. that I felt really unprepared <laughs> for this episode. Not because uh, I don't have my notes, yeah. but because this is what you do. Yes, this is also true, but also um, I'm not usually the one answering the questions, I'm the one asking them. So we're both out of our comfort zone, which is good. So <laughs> let, let, let's get it done. Let's do it. OK, um, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll take notes at the end <laughs> when you can tell me okay. how well or how badly sure, I've done. Sure, sure, sure. You'll be fine. Um, so I guess for most people who are based in the UK, your face is someone uh, they would recognise mm -hmm. um, purely for just how much you've been on TV over the years. Yeah. Um, and for, I guess, our Gen Zers, they would have grown up with your face before, um, yeah. after school every day, <laughs> Monday to Friday, yep. mm -hmm. um, as a face they know. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I will introduce you because I sure. introduce all of my guests okay. um, and I try and give them their flowers straight on. <laughs> and for most people, the reflection on all of the things that you've done in the first sort of minute kind of makes you think, gosh, have I done that much? Mm. Um, so our guest this week is Ayo Akimulere. Say that right? Yeah, perfect. Man. Yeah. yeah really... um, he is a world record swimmer. Believe it or not, we can swim. People. Yeah, no, no, this is the whole point. <laughs> we'll talk about that. World record swimmer, um, producer, co-director of Milk First Productions, um, was the first black male BBC's Blue Peter children's program. So everyone in the UK who grew up with Blue Peter uh, knows this. It was definitely a staple for me after yeah. school yeah. every day. <laughs> um, the crafts plus and plus and plus more. Yeah. Is it still on even? I I'm think sure. so. Yeah, I think Is so. I, I mean, I, I naturally don't watch it anymore, but like, yeah. Did you ever watch yourself? Like, when oh, you were taping. Of course. Of course. Did you? Yeah, well, you have to because, you know, you, you can't get better unless you get used to your own voice and seeing yourself on screen, right? Oh, my God. Yeah, I, know, <laughs> I don't watch anything. Please tell me you listen back to your podcast. No, I actually don't. <laughs> oh, God. I actually do not. What are you doing? I don't. It, it, it's, it's like self, it's like a, you need to generate a sense of healthy self-critique. Oh, no. I'm so hard on myself. I dare not. <laughs> but I, that's I, how you stop being hard on yourself because then you can go, oh, I'm actually really good at what I do. Do you think? Yeah, no, that's, the, that's the best way I, I feel. Instead of someone telling you you're good, yeah. if you see that you're genuinely good, you have yeah. more faith in your own performance. I know, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't. I would I would cringe. Okay, yeah. Also, you've been the ambassador for Street Child United. Mm. Um, you work closely with the Princess Trust. Mm. Been nominated for countless BAFTAs over the years. Um, you've worked with every faction of the BBC over the years. There is no version of BBC mm. that you have not been on. <laughs> BBC One, CBBC, um, I guess ITV, Channel mm. 4, uh, some of the others, um, down to, uh, I guess, our new streaming gurus mm. and, and platforms that we love today, Amazon, etc. Um, you have co-created with Milk First Productions, mm. um, directing as well as being one of the founders of a production company, Yorkshire Cop, Police Racism and yeah, Me. That's our first documentary, yeah. Yeah, um, you've worked on a myriad of things over the years. Like, I've got notes and notes for days. So I feel like <laughs> we're going to be at this, and this is going to be so good. Thank you. Just purely because the breadth of your work mm. is so amazing. Mm, and you. it's evolved 
beautifully mm -hmm. over time, in, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, and it would be great to navigate how you have gone from media to being in the athletics, mm. being really connected to sport, but still finding a way to get your creativity out, yeah, sure, have sure. that still be a part of your identity. Because yes. I think sometimes we feel like we can only be one thing mm. or because you've had success in one thing, you need to work at being mm just in that lane because mm. anything more will be too much right, right? like right. how could you be the first black um see uh, you know uh, yeah, blue peter yeah. presenter and then decide that you know what i'm actually going to shatter another ceiling and go swim out in the open water and then you know what just for fun i'm going to talk about athletics and how you've been able to weave all of those things down to creating projects that you love. Mm. Um, a lot of your work has been very much about amplifying voices, mm. um, consciously or unconsciously, which you'll tell, tell me. Um, but you've done everything from game shows, Weakest Link, um, to Total Wipeout. Mm. My daughter loves Total Wipeout, by the way. Such an experience. <laughs> such an experience. Um, and you have had such a bright career um that it'll be interesting one to to understand i guess where in that journey highs lows mm. um and also at what point do you kind of decide i want to try something new yeah. you know yeah. um and and how that really plays a role in the work that you do because i think most times for anyone who will see you and me sitting here um, the idea of your success seems unattainable mm -hmm. um, to most people who look like me and you um, because they believe that we're made of something else. Um, little do they know that we, we wing it most of the time. Like, <laughs> Still like doing this it. setup, Still if, if this it. episode in any way, shape, or form looks reasonably <laughs> acceptable. Reasonably. Um, I feel like we will. I have to post a behind the scenes yeah, of, you have of to. what you have this to setup see what's going on. You have to. Honestly, there's an iPhone there, there's a camera there, and there's obviously the camera in the building. Uh, I mean, there was a gimbal at one point, that's yeah, yeah. disappeared. Yeah, it wasn't working, I mean, so we, this we, is, we scrapped the idea. You know, so this is what they call a one woman operation. I know. It wasn't intended, but this, <laughs> this has happened this way. Um, but for most, most of the time, I think. Not limiting yourself is probably the best description I have for you mm. um, in terms of what is possible yeah. um, and how you've been able to navigate that and also inspiring other people to see and approach their careers or even their passion projects in mm. the same way. Um, from speaking publicly to obviously now being in a position where you can influence and work with other corporates mm -hmm. um, by navigating how they do business or even just their outlook on people mm -hmm. that look like me or you. Yeah. Um, so from Rich Airways to HSBC, you know, all the corporate clients, hopefully your village people won't come and ask you for money. No, after not, this. trust me, I don't tell anyone anything. Until, you, until people read it out, they're like, you've been doing that? I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's out. No, it's out. I'm, I'm, I keep myself relatively private, funny enough, but like, yeah. Well, I think your professional career mm. says more than enough that mm. I don't think you need to, to pad the holes. But mm. I'll say welcome to Third Culture Africa. Thank you. Applause, applause, yeah. applause. <laughs> Thank you. So, Zeze, honestly, absolute pleasure. I don't know if we tried to do this last week, but I was just, I'm just so, football season's kicked off. So yeah. I'm right in the mix of a lot of that stuff. And I've just started a new job with The Athletic, who are actually in this building. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been totally full on, not, but I'm glad we made it. Yeah, yeah. Not to worry. I, I've been uh, moving home. So I've been <laughs> Perfect. I've been swimming in boxes. So when you cancelled that morning, I literally woke up thinking, gosh, how am I going to do this? Like, my house is a mess. My kid is sick. Like I can still go because yeah. like my sister was around mm. and my nieces were around, so she was in good spirits. Mm. And then when I got the message saying you cancel, I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, my God. oh my god! Like sometimes you literally have to put on your armor. You can't have a chink and turn up and do what you have to. I have those days all the time, and yeah. you know, it's like when you have a week full of meetings, mm. and then you're just like, I don't know if I can really go to this one, mm. and then they inevitably cancel going I'm really sorry I can't I'm like and you know I'm just sitting in bed going um, God, I've got no more to give that I I've needed no that so give. much but yeah. also teaches me that I shouldn't pack it full yeah you know and I think that's you know my career and 
my life um, has been an evolution of knowing when to rest and saying yes. no is really important as well. But I'm sure we'll, we'll get onto that. Yeah, well. learn. I'm I'm learning that. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the phase of going. Actually, I don't like. I don't need to do this mm. right now. I think um, we come from backgrounds where achieving is is really an important thing, mm. right? From from the get go, you're told to be your best. Coming first is all you should strive for. Not second. Not third. Coming first. Um, because that is the ticket to the better life that you hope for. Um, so let's dial back to early days. Mm -hmm. um, you being born in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. At what age did you come to the UK? Uh, so, yeah, I was born in Ibadan, Nigeria. I yeah. um, was there till I was eight years old. Um, and we moved to Birmingham and my dad got a scholarship working mm -hmm. uh on the meningitis vaccine and um, mm -hmm. so both my parents are medics yeah. um and look you know we left nigeria under some really interesting circumstances um i remember we got robbed really heavily um my mom was a nurse and she was doing nights and basically you know i can't remember getting her it was me and my three brothers at the t my two brothers at the time there's five of us all together but um my two brothers at the time my older one and the one after me and my dad was just shaking and saying, come here, come here. And yeah. I didn't even know what was going on in the middle of the night. Yeah. Next thing we know, we're under my dad's bed, hiding, hearing our house being ransacked. Arm robbers. Yeah, proper arm robbers, you know, like, oh and it's so, gosh. and then the next thing you know, they, they lift up the mattress where we are and we're looking up to six men in, with machetes in their hands, you know, like, oh. and, you know, many people don't leave those situations out alive. No. Um, and we right. did, thank God, thankfully. Mm. And, um, you know, I remember, maybe two or three months after we were, we were probably on the plane uh, to, to Birmingham. Yeah. I think my dad was already, was already in the works that he wanted to travel or yes. research. And yes. thankfully we'd, we'd done a little stint in France. My dad used to do some research in Nancy and yeah. I think the UK was the next step. Mm. And yeah, that, that, that began my journey at, to Birmingham in the UK. And I got to stress actually, and I say this to a lot of people, and I don't know if many people um, know about the, this sort of duality is that, you know, I grew up a middle-class Nigerian kid. Yeah coming to Britain, I started yeah. life as a working class British person. 1,001%. So, do you know what I mean? We all, like, so it, it's having to know what was at home. It's a slap in the face. It's a really ridiculous slap, slap in, in the, the face. face, right? You had you had the house help who cook, yeah. clean, driver, gate man. Honestly, land. big gate man. We had <laughs> yard, we had dogs, yeah. mango tree in the back garden, nice little bungalow. Yeah. Mom and dad had a car. Like it was a, that, yeah. that, you know, yeah. you say picture perfect white middle class life yeah. that was it yeah um and we came to england and none of that we were in a we were in really dodgy you know mold infested council housing yeah. and you know uh we had to start again yeah. and um but you know you, it's easy saying that now yeah. um but yeah those are some hard times man and, and times. also times of feeling uh what's how can i put it um not so proud of who you are mm. Really ashamed. I was going to say, how did you deal with, I know for me, you know, when you and your friends or your peers at the mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. everyone came into England at different mm -hmm. circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember for me getting a job mm -hmm. and some of my friends were like, why are you working? Um, but it was a different experience for me. And, and while I celebrated the independence that came with it, I was very much aware that I was lacking in something. Now, in hindsight, looking back, I'm really grateful that I've always worked and I have my own financial independence, etc. But at the time, as a young kid, who knows the difference? Um, as you say, there is a sense of shame mm. that comes with knowing your worth and knowing that the version of life that you're living isn't equal to what it is you believe you're worth. Yeah, I think you're spot on. Um, mm. You know, like... I didn't realize that until I started really entering this incredible world of media where mm. you're actually incredibly surrounded by privilege, right? Mm. Like a whole different kind of privilege. Oh, no, you guys enjoy it. That, that we enjoy. Uh, oh, well, I, I, it took me a while before I started <laughs> to be able to enjoy it. I actually put a tweet out today. Yeah. Like, Let me see if I've got it. Go like, uh, not a tweet, it was a, a, a thing. I put it on my stories on social media. Okay. And I just thought I'd do it as a post because it got such an incredible reaction. Yeah. I, I basically wrote last night, it was just something in my head. And I was just mm. like, I maybe need to celebrate this for once in a while. I was like, yeah. for the first time in my life, I'm able to accept and see that as cascading series of positive events is in fact a good thing yeah. uh, to live in the joy that's unfolding to not doubt the outcomes through projecting a future mm. that doesn't yet exist yeah. and it's a really beautiful place to be but this i'm 40 Amazing. years old now yeah. this has been a journey for the last 20 years to get to this point where i'm like 
you're supposed to be here. Yeah. You're no, you're good. Yeah. You're really good. Yeah. But also our environment, if you think of growing up in Nigeria, everyone's hopeful. And no one's actions are actually credited to the hard work they put in. That's the thing. It is it is it is put onto a higher being and, and I believe in God and I, I, I love the idea of having Jesus and mm. the Lord and, and that foundation. But at the same time, I recognize that that has taken some of the joy in accepting that good things can happen in succession. And also that you created some yeah. of this as well. Yeah. Let's not forget, you're, yeah. you're also driving your life. Yeah, but when we're taught not to believe that. We're taught that by some level of grace, somehow through the level of grace and luck, mm. you're where you are. And so the credit that you're naturally given in a different society mm. where you see other people accept that, yes, there is some grace in my mm. journey, but actually I've been busting my ass. And mm. the things we also take for granted in terms of what is really ours versus what belongs to others, because what we have to be humble, right? We can't say, ah, I did that. You're bragging. You're being boastful. God can snatch it mm. away. You know, those are the mm. underlying messages that we're given. So at any point, you're constantly looking for where where is the hole in this journey because it's coming. I know it is. Mm. And Nigeria is very much like that. Mm. You know, you could be having a great day on Nepa takes light <laughs> to no fault of your own. Mm. And so you're conditioned to believe that this is this is what life has to offer. And I love that one you've shared mm. that you've been through this experience even though on the outside you've just been winning mm -hmm. right consistently mm -hmm. winning but to be able to see that you're winning yeah it's really hard especially mm -hmm. in an environment that doesn't validate that as well mm -hmm. so you're coming from an environment that sort of doesn't validate hard work and then you're yeah. coming from a relatively oppressive environment yeah. that doesn't validate hard work as well yeah. so you're in this middle bit yeah. that's like am i doing all right i'm, I'm yeah. smashing it right <laughs> And and for, for people to say you're smashing it, for you to accept that are two very different things. Yes. Because they can say it, but if yeah. you can't accept it, yeah. it just bounces off the shoulders because you feel you need to climb more and more and more. You're sounding like a therapist. <laughs> well, I'll be honest, this is me being through therapy to yeah. be able to articulate these you're things. You're sounding in my mind. Like, like my therapist right no, now. No, but I've, I've always known this. Um, yeah. I've always known this. And I think for me, the joy of finding confidence in oneself mm. has been a, an exploration of what I have naturally. Yeah. Um, I'm a Yoruba man um, and I come from a strong lineage, mm. um, a wonderful history, mm. the Bantu people, Beautiful. like it goes, yeah. you know, this, this stretches far and wide across mm. Africa, but also what they created pre-colonialism yes. was really important for me to really attach myself to because once you attach, for me, once you attach yourself back to who you fundamentally are, yes. culturally, historically, you look around and you go, do you know where I'm from, bro? Yeah. Do you do you do you know what yeah. my people did? Yeah. Do you know who I am? Do you, do you also do you, do you know things like the Great Wall yeah. of Benin, which was the greatest man-made structure yeah. in the world? Yeah. That was destroyed by the British. So yeah. I wouldn't know that my people were able to build yeah. big, incredible structures. Yeah. Once you well, start tapping so, into so that, the people in yeah. The come house. on, man. Once <laughs> you start tapping into these things, yeah. You start going, oh my God, like, yeah. oh my God, like, but do there you, it is. But do you in think plain that's happened as a result of a shift in, in time? So I, I write a column focused mm. on Africa. A lot of my work is very much pro Africa, mm. right? Um, and I feel like there's now this global recognition um, that almost validates Africans to be a part of the rest of the world. At some, at, for a very long time, we were excluded, right? Mm. And for a very long time, we were pigeonholed mm. and we were told that we, we could only be teachable, mm. not innovators, mm. but we could be taught to be something. Mm. And I had this conversation with a friend of mine the other day and I said, goodness, you know, um, I'm going to a concert, you know, I love going to these Afrobeats mm. concerts. They're like, for me, amazing. And I was saying, can you imagine when we were students in the UK, if this was the version of the UK we grew up in, can you imagine Pride. what, just even what we would be capable or even the permission we would give ourselves to do more? Because for, for a lot of us that are doing more, we're outliers, right? For our generation. Um, because somehow 
we just wanted to know what was on the other side. Mm -hmm. We didn't just go down the be a banker, be a doctor, be a this route, right? Which was which was prescribed because that was guaranteed success. We were doing I too know, let me go and try this one. Let me try that one. Maybe this, you know, and there wasn't that conscious thought of, okay, this is going to be the thing that gives me success. Or I've seen somebody like me do this, or there's a bunch of us who are connected. Um, and I think that was one, one of the reasons why I started the podcast, because I thought I meet enough people where we're having these conversations amongst ourselves when we bump into each other. We're all aware of each other, but we never connect. Mm -hmm. Whereas this new generation, are connected mm. in this creative space. Mm. They're connected in having conversation and normalizing it. Whereas I feel like we don't necessarily normalize it in the same way as they do. Now, for you, when the penny dropped, um, and obviously this has dropped later in your career, mm. in the early days with your first wins, um, we can talk about the open water swimming, mm. right? Because because that's that's the thing where if someone googled your name, it's probably the first yeah, thing yeah, that yeah, comes for up. Sure, for sure. Um, one preconceived ideas: uh, we are black, mm -hmm. we don't swim. Mm -hmm. In fact, we sink. <laughs> which is also a lie. <laughs> yeah, mm. which, but again, when you look look at African or Africans, there are strong images, and I have their images in my mind of fishermen, you know, young boys diving to the bottom of a river and coming up. All of that is real to us, but somehow there's this disconnect when we put ourselves in a more developed space that we're incapable. How did you deal with the perception that that could be you in those moments? Yeah, I mean, just sort of start by saying, you know, being the first Black Blue Peter presenter was a real moment for me to to take on board mm -hmm. something that really represented white middle class Britain. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Blue Peter, for the listeners who don't know, is like, you know, this very twee um, <laughs> British show that all the, the presenters on the show ended up sort of traveling around the world and, you know, interviewing people and sort of showing culture through yeah. a, a particular lens for children anyway, globally and also in the UK and mm -hmm. making things and crafts and yeah. cooking. So it's a real sort of wholesome show, right? And I remember I moved to London on, on a six week basis to work behind the camera because mm -hmm. my dream was always to make documentaries, whether I was in, in front of the camera or behind, I just wanted to be part of the making process. Mm -hmm. And then um, someone offered me the job on Blue Pier and I said no. And I asked myself, like, why did I say no? And she was like, are you silly? Like, everyone wants to do you. Yeah. But were you in media before this? Yeah, so I'd only, so I, I was working regionally in a, in a local news channel. Okay. I was there for six months because I looked around, firstly, there was all like me. <laughs> Secondly, I was like, these lot, I was, what, 22 at the time? Yeah. I was like, these lot are old. Man. Yeah. Like, and this is not the life I saw myself having. Yeah. That really cozy life yeah in the back of new yorkshire in leeds mm. like i don't i don't i wasn't ready for that yeah so i i just factored away of moving finding a job in london and okay. thankfully i went to an event and they were like we can offer you a six-week contract just snatched it came yeah. down by myself in the backpack nothing more. Yeah. and i found somewhere to live and it's a, it's a really long story it's not probably not it's too long to go on the podcast but coming to london was a real revelation because mm. firstly it's buzzing it's it's intense yeah. but also no one told me how to navigate the industry Wow. So everything you're making up as you go along. So Blue Peter comes my way and I said no. And the reason I said no is because I didn't watch it as a child. Mm. I really didn't. Interesting. I really, honestly, I grew up in what like... What did you used to watch after school? Biker Grove, Grange Hill, like the so you, slightly so you, naughtier shows. So you shows. came in from school later then? What were yeah. you doing in school so late? And I wasn't even at school so late. I was just like... We watch cartoons and stuff, but we went. We might switch to CITV and okay. then switch to. Do you know what I mean? Like there was yeah. a there was a mixture. Okay. Either you do either you watch Art Attack on CITV yeah, yeah. or you watch oh, like Blue Peter. They this were roughly at the same time. We liked yeah. Art Attack. Okay. Do you know, like we loved Art Attack instead okay. of watching Blue Peter. So we were those I kids. I wonder what the demographic says about the kids who watched Art Attack. Uh, and the one that, the naughty one who watched Art Attack. <laughs> that's what happened. Um, but yeah, like and but I actually realised that they hadn't. So the, the in, in fifty years of that program being yeah. made. 
they had a, a black female presenter called Diane Louise Jordan, who yes. was the one I really recognised yes. on the show. And then I was like, you know what? I don't think a black guy's ever done this. No. And one of the reasons I did it was to to shatter all those myths mm. and, and reshape that narrative of how we view black people in British media. Yeah. I had I realised even at that young age that this shows in the heart of Middle England. Yeah. Every day of the week. Monday to Friday, without fail. Imagine those Middle English kids watching yeah. this going, yeah. the black guy just jumped out of a aeroplane. <laughs> what? Or even questioning it or having those questions in their head. But where did you get the consciousness for that at that age? So my, so my granddad is so weird, like, and this is what I'm talking about, connecting back to mm. your heritage. So, like, we're very lucky, like, my mom's my mom's family is the, 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 the surname Zidul. Yeah. And my grandfather is a guy called Bola Zidul. Yeah. And my, my grandfather basically was the leader of the Methodist Church in Nigeria. Okay. And... Um, God rest his soul. He's got a tomb in Ikorodu, yeah. um, and when my grandma's in the next tomb, she died very recently as well. Yeah. And um, my granddad travelled the world. Mm. Uh, my granddad, Cambridge graduate. Yeah. And my granddad, if you go to my mom's house in Ikorodu, you'd see pictures on the wall with my granddad yeah. at the Vatican with the Pope yeah, and stuff like yeah. that. So in a weird way, I'd already had that inside me. Mm. It was just about harnessing it. My grandfather wrote this book called Old Mary, okay. which is God in Yoruba, yeah. and it questions. The validity of our own gods it mm. questions the validity of christianity versus yes. what the, the religion before, we yeah. had pre-christianity yeah. and so i've always come from that kind of background yes, yes. Um, but weirdly none of my siblings have followed suit but for me and my mom says it now she's like sometimes you just remember your, your, your grandfather all the time <laughs> so i don't know if you can give someone yeah. that or if whether it's something they have inherently yeah. but i just thought to myself i just want to do something different like mm. i was very aware and i always a kid my mom hated it like I'm always a kid who's always asking questions. Yes. Why? Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Stop asking. Shut up. Come on. Can why? You just follow? Can you just follow? And she knew I've always been that yeah. way. I've always been that yeah. way. I remember even trying to get into the media industry. I, to, I lied to my parents. I said, um, we don't do film and media. Why are you doing that? I want to get into advertising. Okay, yeah. advertising. Yeah, yeah. You understand that? <laughs> I was trying to be a filmmaker. I was trying to... Yeah. So I was hustling. And, yeah. and for me, the, 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 the proof for me was to show my parents mm. without telling them what I wanted to do. Nigerians yeah. operate on being shown value. 100%. You have to show them the value. Yeah. So if you're trying to tell them, they can't no. imagine it. No. Of a particular no. demographic in there and it's a particular generation. Well, I think for, 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 for the reason being is they never saw it. Exactly. So if we think of our parents, like my parents, like your granddad, um, were the generation where they came here to do, you know, further education, mm. so masters or some vocation. But they were the generation who went back. Mm, they had mm, to go back. Mm. They had to go and create value back home. And the only way they could do it was through industry. Because Nigeria needed industrious Nigerians mm. to continue to function. And so when you're talking about creative cultural arts, they're thinking, but that's not for us. It's supposed to be for people who have options. And then to to fast forward you now going but I am the product mm. of, of that journey. You've created that. Yeah, You've but they don't, that. I don't think they recognize that. Mm. I think my parents only recently started to accept that the role that they play is to be able to give us these options. But also, you know, my mom, my parents, we all love watching TV. Yeah. If I'm sitting there watching it, but they why, don't connect. Well, I know. <laughs> but also, my mom, my mom, some, you know, my mom's, my mom's I've, I've come from a very unique mm. uh, space. Like, my mom, as a nurse in Nigeria at the time, went to Japan mm. for like a month or something. Yeah. My, my dad has traveled around Europe and yeah. Canada and stuff like that. So we, I remember my dad used to bring us like little flight pins back yes. from when he used to sit in the cockpit yeah. from KLM. You yeah, to fly yeah, KLM, yeah, they're yeah, the best. Yeah. Or British Airways, <laughs> they're the best. You know, so like yeah. I already had that in my head. Mm. How did they not think that that would rub off on me and make me want more from the world? Do you know what I mean? Like it, It's it's quite shocking actually when yeah. you think about Because sometimes I say to my mom, but what did you think would happen? Yeah. Like, yeah. I um, think I'm gonna have my lot, yeah. you know. Like, but you've shown me. But also, that that was the yeah. mad thing. So the first thing I I, I did, and this is really fascinating, mm. and I don't know whether it's because I was born in Nigeria, yeah. Um, but when I first started Blue Peter, the first film we did was to go back to Nigeria and show yes. the audience where I, yes. where I grew up, all this kind of stuff, yes. right? And for me, what hit me in the brain was that I actually grew up around people, black people, yeah. that were just doing things, yeah. Like there wasn't your black, so no. you can't do this. Yeah. 
like our next door neighbor in, in, in Ibadan at the time was like a soap actress. Yeah. She was like Every, one of the soap everyone, actresses. Everyone tried something. Uh, do you know something. what I mean? She was creative. Like, yeah. so I said to mom, yeah. you remember our next door neighbor? She was a soap actress. <laughs> So why do you yeah. not think that like yeah. we might want to even venture yeah. into the arts or yeah. something like that? Yeah. I was like, this is the foundation you brought us up yeah. in. It wasn't until I, was, I came here that my parents became really cautious of yeah. that. Like, you know what? I don't know what the options are here. Stick to gonna, this. Yeah. I don't see how you're going to permeate it. But, but also I had the background of being like, I know other people. what I, I can be. Yeah. Look, I've seen doctors. Yeah. Uncle's a lawyer. Yeah. Uncle's a whatever. Yeah. I know what that looks yeah. like. But Uncle that travels. Your, but that Auntie was your travels. first BAF denomination. Yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah. I wonder um, what parents feel in that I'm a parent now mm. um, and sometimes I sort of dial back into some of my experiences and, and my parents' reactions to mm. some of the outcomes and I think, gosh, like they certainly in their minds had no idea what they were, what they had, what seeds they had planted mm -hmm. um, and it sounds the same for you where your parents almost discount the experiences that they have because in some ways you're in this new space new world where you're conditioned in the same way that we initially believe less of ourselves mm -hmm. i think we don't internalize it the same way they do mm -hmm. and so then it becomes this romance of they're going back home to retire exactly which they never do <laughs> <laughs> Nothing yeah, works. Know, Nothing works. They're stressed. I know. I know. Um, I think that's a good point. Actually, it's a very good point you 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 put there. And I think, this, you know, immigrants. I'd call us migrants. Actually, yeah. let's reshape that. Let's mm. reshape that. As migrants mm. to the UK in uh, nineteen ninety, I think not enough can be, as much as I know anyway, not enough is said for my parents of what they went through. No. On on the streets of the UK, not at it, all. I think within the NHS, not at all. all that, do you know what I mean? Like, or just in general. Yeah. Like my my dad um, told me the first story about his first job offer, which was in the UK. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't name the company, mm -hmm. um, but my dad's name's Gregory. Mm -hmm. It's very English. His first name is Gregory, and um, his our last name's like Oriagi, it's kind of nondescript. Mm. You, you wouldn't imagine that, you know, a black guy was going to walk through the door. the door. And so, you know, my dad's quite clever. And so he was offered lots of jobs and, you know, he really wanted to work for this company because, you know, as a young chap, it was a company that he loved. Um, and he says, you know, the first day he turns up at the job and like the manager looks at him and just with one look, he understood what that look was. Um, and he didn't, he didn't, they sort of withdrew the offer. Mm. Um, or my mum saying about wanting to rent, um, properties, um, cause my mum went to France at 17 mm. and, you know, she would have to send one of her French friends ahead to try and rent the room, mm. um, because they wouldn't rent to a black person. Can I be honest with you? If I'm honest, like, you know, even as, 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 as a young adult. Yeah someone in tv mm. whatever before i bought a place yeah. that was still a preoccupation in my head how would you even when you're airbnb now yeah. i think about these things when i travel still Gosh. i'm like are they gonna be do you know what i mean like yeah. it, it, it's it's that so part yeah. of yeah our dna to a certain degree it is even though we are now i guess much more global citizens but we still experience it exactly exactly like, i just moved home mm. and one of the challenges of my new move mm. is i've moved to an area where someone like me isn't a reality for a lot of the mm. people who live in that area mm. and so you there's this fear of the unknown and there's this threat that you present even though you have no idea what they're afraid of. But also, if you don't do it, who will? This, yeah. is, what I, this is what I say. Yeah. I am not going to stop myself mm. from enjoying the fruits of my labor yeah. just because I'm worried that someone's going to feel a bit disruffled, like, mm. or ruffle some feathers. Yeah. Nah, man, I'm done. Like, this, this is how you shift the dial from where we were to where we, what, we, what, we, what we're becoming. Mm. And I still see, to a certain degree, my parents carrying this backpack of heavy baggage mm. and we talked about therapy yeah. i mean like there's, there's a journey through that yeah. also and i think that that is about shifting the dial as well yeah. but for me i'm like whatever that afterworld looks like mm. i don't know what i do know about it is what i'm doing here right now yeah and what i'm doing right here right now is working hard 
but also making sure I enjoy that labour. Like yeah. the idea of taking time off, the idea of having a holiday, yeah. the idea of switching off. Mm. Do you realise how much better at productivity you are when you rest? And that's why parents don't afford themselves. No, but rest, rest was yeah, lazy. You're lazy. Get up. Do you know what the biggest Get advice my dad gave me? And it sticks in my head. It's something I spoke to my life coach about yeah. recently. He said, um, it's, it stayed with me because he said it's so, when I was so young. Yeah. And he said, um, it's okay to, you know, to, 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 to rest, but don't be idle. Yeah, don't be idle. What do you mean, don't be idle? <laughs> so you're not really resting. <laughs> You're not really staying in bed and yeah. just like reading the can newspaper or <laughs> listen to a podcast. Don't be idle. Can what? I say? Can I say? Yeah. What are you? So, so hold on. So you're saying you, you're not resting? No. No, 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 don't no. Be idle. Just don't be idle. But yeah. that means doing something. Yeah. But I struggled to not do anything. I know. Like I my know. sister came around the other day and she goes, yeah, I don't understand what you're doing. Mm. Like you haven't sat the whole time we're here. I've actually come to sit and enjoy your company. And she goes, yeah, but you've decided to cook. You've decided to do this. You've decided to give the children two million toys to play with. And I realized I actually don't know how to do nothing. Like, I really don't know how to not do something. And even though we like to think that we rest, yeah. um, sometimes when people go, oh, what are you doing now? And I go, I'm resting. Yeah. Um, sometimes they take offense to it, but I don't think they realize how big a milestone it is for me to actually say that I am choosing <laughs> to rest. Black joy equals black rest. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, can't, you know, when you talk about not celebrating your winnings, yeah, because you're not sitting down to reflect on how far you've come. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. And for, we're hard on ourselves. Incredibly. I mean, some is validated by the environments we're in, yeah. but even, even <laughs> excuse to use the, you know, the, the ideology of, of Christianity, but, it's like Jesus carrying that cross yeah. every day of his life. Yeah. That's he, what we're doing. He takes no breaks. No breaks. No breaks. Oh, oh, keep walking. <laughs> just keep walking. But I'm tired. Eh? Yeah. Do, do, you've, you've got a bigger purpose. Yeah, don't, keep going. <laughs> does tired, does does, tired give you results? I'm sweating. I'm bleeding. <laughs> uh -huh. So don't be idle. <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> but it, it's, I, I think that, that re, readdressing those yeah. issues or those ideas or ideologies that have been planted in our in yeah. us and i think some of it is incredibly cultural yeah it's the most freeing thing my my my, my life coach once said to me he's like what's your relationship with stillness i was like I'm mm. about still now i'm talking mm. to you <laughs> yeah. it's like what's your relationship and it's really got me thinking about yeah. so much of that and I'm not saying that will never not creep back up again yeah um every day you know i'm mm. like i need to just chill today i need to chill today yeah. the other day i literally mistook this the, the, the woman I get coffee every morning from mm. a cafe. I was sitting outside in a different situation. The same yeah. woman came up to me in a different situation. Yeah. I was like, hey, you remember me? I was like, and I thought she was someone else. Yeah. I thought she was someone, I thought she was my podcast producer. Yeah. And I literally <laughs> spoke to her for about 30 minutes about what that we're work. doing with the podcast. Yeah. And she was just looking at me and I hadn't clocked. Yeah. That she, she was uncomfortable. And yeah. she went, okay, bye. Yeah. And then it dawned on me. I was like, oh my God, that's that's the woman that sent that's me coffee every morning. Do you know why? <laughs> because I was arresting. And you're on go. I wasn't go. recharging. You're on go. Literally. You're, you're wake up, imagine go. You're on, I don't know how many what? siblings you've got. Oh, don't worry. I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> what's your one is it? What's your one? I'll tell you. I, I'll allow me. I, I love him. <laughs> You just yeah, have to kill me. You just have to kill me. No, you're killing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you're killing yourself. It's not me. You're killing yourself. You need to rest. <laughs> My mom listens to the show. Mommy, I'm really sorry. <laughs> but it, we, we laugh about it because yeah. it's actually really funny. Like, you yeah. know, our, our parents, I mean, I don't think we'd be industrious otherwise. No. I don't think we'd do no. things we're doing now otherwise. But yeah. I think, how do we shift what? we've learned mm. and this is the evolution of generations right yes. like is is obviously respect the tradition respect culture respect yes. all these kind of things but how can we further it yes. to to be part of an emerging world yeah and but, but there's no mistake we're in this country right now yeah. so what can we also learn from the places we're in yeah because we don't have a template of who we were no, not not in the sense that it gives us a strength and identity to navigate being a third culture African. It, it really doesn't. Mm. Um, and everyone asked me, oh, why did I call the show Third Culture mm. Africans? And I was like, well, in fairness, even within Africa, 
most Africans are third culture Africans. Yeah, yeah. You know, my parents are from Benin and I was born in Port Alcott. I grew up in Port Alcott. So actually, a lot of my friends growing up don't realize that I'm from Benin. They, everyone thinks that I'm a Port Alcott girl. How mad is that though? I called the Benin more. Yeah, yeah, right? you did. It's one you of the most did. incredible civilizations. But, but you in know what history. I mean? But everyone who I grew up with assumes I'm. So you learn, even within a country like Nigeria, to code switch very quickly. And then you come to the UK and you realize this just is another version of it's it. Massive. Because if you're in, say for instance, you're in Lagos, your reaction in Lagos, and you know, you probably speak Yoruba mm. versus you go to the north. I know you nothing go... about what they're saying up there. Exactly. I don't know even what they're saying. But to blend in, you might give them some pigeon. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Because of course, somehow, course. some way you must you, get, you, you must, must just, communicate. You yeah, must, yeah, you're so You true. must flow. Yeah. And so, when people say, oh gosh, Nigerians can live anywhere in the world. Because we've had to adapt within because our own Because we've had to adapt within our own country. And mm. we adapt daily and constantly. I lived in South Africa for five years. And, you know, the Zulus are different. The Kosas are different. Course mm -hmm. Everyone has something else they bring to the table. But here's the funny thing. I adapted. Mm -hmm. As much as everyone was like, oh, Nigerians and South Africans. Look, I have tons of South African friends mm -hmm. who love jollof rice now because of me. Mm -hmm. And we have this ability to navigate life mm -hmm. where I think it's almost like a superpower. But also, I think you need to give, yeah, you need to give we need to give ourselves credit because it's out of necessity. Totally. So if I say to you, look, you know, because uh, I work in sport yeah. and it, 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 it baffles me. It really, I love it because mm -hmm. a lot of these black players from France or yeah. Italy or whatever, they speak four languages, man. Yeah. Mother tongue, yeah. usually, We're not whether we're from Cameroon or we're Nigeria. We're not in that race. I know, but still, yeah. I look at it as a further, a, a greater black pride. Totally. Because for me, it's like a lot of my European friends, white European friends will travel yeah. and still get away with English. Well, speak, uh, you can't even oh, pronounce the name correctly. But also sit in that expat community. Yeah. We can't do that because there are not enough of us everywhere no. else. So no. if we do travel, even though the, the color of our skin doesn't As allow you to blend in. Assimilate you or die. You have to. <laughs> when, you, when you hear like a black person speaking Russian, you're like, ah, what? My, my uncles, you know, mom's friends and family, yeah. you know, they, they've been traveling to Russia. I remember yeah. my, my, my mom's best friend's husband at the time. Yeah. He just picked up the phone. <laughs> what is it? He's like, he works in Russia every day. Yeah. He's back to Russia. I was like, yeah. look at that adaptability. Yeah. But but that shows a greater ingenuity. Definitely. And that those are the things for me that I, I sort of latch on to. Those are the things I hold on to when I need to find power. When I need to mm. seek power and say, mm. do you know what? You just need to look further to yeah. find where that power looks like, yeah. what that power looks like, because you won't necessarily see it in front of you, especially when you live in, in, in the Western structure. Yeah. But actually, it's your duty to find your power for yourself. Yeah. You know? Two world records. Oh, well, yes, yes, yes. So while you're telling us we should rest, <laughs> you, you're physically two world records. Uh, leave me alone now. I, I need <laughs> yeah, to walk. Like two world records. <laughs> Talking everywhere on the waves, <laughs> TV, radio. So, guys, take take his advice with pinch of salt. He has two world records. Hey. But this is the thing about us, right? Because there is a rebut to, to someone saying, well, but maybe you have the luxury of saying this because you've been afforded mm. these experiences. Mm. Now, how do you get to a point where, was a world record even a goal for you? No. I, okay. You know, I, I sell... It sounds really weird. Mm. I seldom set myself goals. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not sort of a goal orientated. Maybe I do subconsciously. Um, yeah. I, I feel like we've got this running thing in our family mm. of premonitions. Okay. And I wonder how much of that is attached to our culture, who yeah. we were. I mean, you know. Yeah. Um, and I always sort of sometimes foresee that. Actually, you know what? I think I wouldn't mind trying TV. Mm. I don't know what that journey looks like. Yeah. But I end up putting myself in these really bizarre situations yes. and yes. just going for broke. They call it manifesting. I try to, maybe that's my own but whatever you yeah. want to call it. But yeah. I still don't feel manifesting is enough. Mm. You have to move forward yes. into that for whatever it is that's helping you out yeah. to take you further. Agreed. If I'm sitting on my couch right now, I'm not. I'm not going to do Blue Peter. Yeah. I moved to London after six weeks because I said I can't be here, man. Like yeah. I want more. I want yeah. more for my life, you know. Yeah. And I didn't even know I was going to present. I actually yeah. came to work behind the camera. Yeah. Blue Peter came as a product of yeah. me coming to London for six weeks. Yeah. 
with a month's rent mm. and being at the BBC bar and chatting yeah. to someone who was the producer. Oh, it's good to talk. It is. That's what it we do best. That's what we do best. Talk. That's what we do oh best. Oh my God. You know? When people tell me, oh, I have an idea. How did you start? Mm. I said, honestly, it's good to talk. Yeah. Because there's something, and I've had to learn that. Because mm. our culture teaches us, don't talk about your business. Mm. Don't. You don't know who. Oh, we don't even trust each you other. You don't know who That's is for issue. you. That's you don't know who. Don't trust each <laughs> other. I, I, I think, I think there's, the, yeah. there's some truth to that because, yeah. you know, we, we're in a competitive environment, right? Yeah. So actually someone takes your idea, whatever, yeah. be, be, be very aware of that. But it's really important to connect with people. But mm. back to your original question, do yeah. I, about goal setting and, and things mm. like that and world records. Um, so the world record for me came after I'd done five years on the program. Yeah. And I realized that Actually, this is a this is a part has actually become part of my journey over the last you know, on my career trajectory. Yes. It's a subconsciously after five years I lose most a lot of interest in what I'm doing. Oh, so I'm done. Literally. I flogged it. I've done everything. I think you and I see the same therapist. <laughs> and like literally my therapist was talking because I'm like, I was like I have this enthusiasm. Yeah. I start something, I see it work. After that, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. I'm done. I've done exactly I need to go that. and learn something else. Exactly. So what, literally, my last session was talking about the fact that, do I go out seeking challenges? Mm. Because why must I go and find the hard one? Why must I find something but, but, but to... That, but that also comes into resting. That yeah. also comes into bathing in, in, in the success you've created for yourself. And mm. we'll, we'll get onto that for sure. But like yeah. the world record was literally, I, you know, two... BAFTA nominations, first time as a presenter. Mm. Wow, wow, that's amazing. Yes. Learn to bungee jump out of a helicopter. Um, learn to skydive. Mm. Um, learn to drive a race car. This is yes. all part of the Blue Peter life. You know, yes. that's what they yes. do. They challenge the presenters to do whatever. Yes. And I thought to myself, black people, I don't see swimming. No. Why is this? But we grab swimming. Of course. Nigeria has a coast. <laughs> yeah, we, yes, we grew up swimming. Nigeria has a coast. Yeah, we like, grew up swimming. You know, this is the mad thing. And, yeah. and I, I started really playing with this thing. And I started going, every Olympics I've watched, there was Eric the Eel, I remember years ago. Mm. He was the one. So why is everyone clapping? But, you know, what is yeah. So I just started thinking, you know what? The job of this program, if I'm going to stick to my mission, mm. is that we want to inspire mm. young people to yeah. push themselves beyond what they knew. Mm. What was interesting was for me, everything I'd done previously and because of the structure of it, mm. there was a very high chance that I'd complete it. Mm. We had the best help, we had yeah. the best people, experts around yeah. us, so I was going to complete it. For once in my journey as a broadcaster, I'd be doing something I wasn't sure I was able to finish. Mm. And I thought, you've got two endings here. You can show your audience that you don't have to be great at everything, yeah. but you can still work hard. Yeah. Or you could show your audience that you are trying to overcome something that's so painfully scary for you mm. that what's on the other side of that mm. is something really fruitful. Mm. And that was why I learned to swim. I had 10 weeks to learn to swim. Mm. Not just that, I'd be the first person to swim across the deepest stretch of ocean in the world, which is the, mm. the Mariana Trench, the yeah. opening part of it, which I would be swimming with, the Pilau Trench, mm. 11 miles deep, 5 miles across. And it was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life mm. because I genuinely was petrified mm. of water. Like mm. it was a real thing for me. I, I was getting hypnotized. I mean, there were everything <laughs> under the sun. <laughs> Therapy. No, and I, I, but also, but also, you know, for, for me, it yeah. was really important to show black vulnerability. Yeah. That's the most powerful thing for oh, me that came out of this. Are we going there? We might do if you want are to. Are we I'm going open. there? Well, I'm an open book. Are we like, going black there? Black vulnerability instead of black strength is so powerful for me yeah. because that's also part of our makeup to be strong yeah yeah it's also why you will see uh, a black mom and dad send their kids to swimming lessons mm. but they're not getting in the water as well yeah and i yeah. want to play on that mm. i want to show us that it, in order for us to get the best out yeah. of our offspring, siblings, friends, yeah. we need to be able to show that actually we haven't got it all together. No, no. It's so important. No. And but that's why I learned to but swim. But people won't believe you if you say you don't have it together. I just read all those many things. <laughs> they won't believe you. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you don't. That's what, you, that's what people say. Mm. You mentioned the word mission mm. and you said your mission. 
we're in this age where everyone's talking about knowing your purpose. Mm. I think it's such a loaded. It's very loaded. It's such a loaded, loaded word. But you use the word mission. At what point did you decide you had a mission, whichever one of your missions? So At what point did it become clear that maybe this is what I'm supposed to be doing? So it's important to caveat this with the fact that now my relationship with that mission is 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 less far far less stressful than it used to be. Mm. Um, I was obsessed with this idea that there was no one that looked like me doing things out mm. there. At the time, there was a guy called Reggie Yates yeah. um, and a guy called Otis. We were the three mm. black people, on, and Angelica Bell as well. Yes. Um, I, I sort of know her now. She's brilliant. And um, I was like, there's no black traveler. No. So my focus was always, I want to be the first. Mm. First big black to be presenter. Yeah. First black man to swim. First yeah. black man to bungee jump out of it. Yeah. You know, all these kind of first, those first. So yeah. I was like, I'm changing it. But also that became my identity. And mm. also that sort of lent to my big mental breakdown in yeah. when I was 28. Because yeah. I put this pressure, pressure. on myself yeah. to be the one. Yeah. But also, I, I don't, I can't articulate this enough. When you're one of the few that are doing stuff, you feel the pressure of everybody else to try and represent, to be this, to be that. So my journey really away from a mission, my new mission really from what it used to be is, is actually my mission is, is based on authenticity mm. and try to be my most authentic self because my version of black is very different to anyone else's. Totally. And actually it's really important for us to see yeah. that. And yeah. that's what I talk about, the vulnerability. That's what yeah. I talk about. Um, going into businesses, when yeah. you spoke about going into businesses, yeah. it's, it's to demystify mm. black because it's a social construct. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't mean I have to just like chicken. Yeah. I can be also vegan. Yeah. I do quite like vegan. I mix it up. I mix it up. It's, it's, it's also understanding that I don't need a big portion of food. I can have a little... Are you sure? Most, oh, it depends Are you what sure? It depends how much things I've got. <laughs> But do you know what I'm trying to say? Are you sure can you say no to a plate of jollof? Well, Sweet the, the jollof. If it's powdered jam, it's just little mouths, please. Just small, small now. Please, just small, small. But, it, you know, I, I use that yeah. literally. But, like, yeah. it's about really trying to shake off the baggage of what I'm supposed to be or what I feel I'm supposed to be and just be me. Yeah. I don't want to be sitting here in 10 years' time, mm -hmm. if I'm still here, you know, by the grace of whoever, and be saying... <sighs> You know what? Says it. It's been hard, man. I, yeah. I'm just put. No, yeah. I'm. I'm grateful that I've tried to sh reshape the paradigms of who I think I should be. Yeah. I now live between the seaside and I live in London. I live in the seaside because my parents wouldn't have dared thought. Do you know what? Let's go to the beach. <laughs> let's just relax. Yeah. Let's let's put our feet in the water yeah. and, and and just look and go. Ooh, this is, nice. nice. yeah. this is nice. Yeah. This is nice. You're supposed to be aspiring all the time. All the time. All the time. But actually, when are you enjoying it? So yeah. for me, it, the mission immediately was that. Now the mission is about based on authenticity. And everything I do, I hope, yes. from the work that I do, is based on trying to find or be closer to my authentic self with oh. power and, um, and, and with success as well. I want to talk about fear of failure. Yeah, please. Um, because you talked about wanting to be first being a thing at the time and then you having a breakdown as a result of the pressure. Mm. Now, how much did fear play a role in propelling that narrative for you? I mean, there's so many different facets of fear that I faced coming through the industry. Mm. Fear of not being accepted of being who I really want to be. Mm -hmm. uh, fear of letting my parents down because mm -hmm. this was a, a path they didn't understand and I had to prove that yeah. I made the right choice. Mm -hmm. And 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 there are there are there are, there are a few more. Let's let's start with that first one mm -hmm. because the, I actually realised as I finished now actually in hindsight when you look back, I realised that that mental breakdown at twenty eight came from a young boy who hadn't really, or man, who hadn't really understood himself, mm. being thrust into an environment that didn't understand him or didn't actually want to get to know him. Yeah. Um, and that environment in itself was a BBC show full of upper middle class white people. Yeah. But also, and this is where it gets really dark, mm. and I don't talk about this often, but mm. it's really important to mention that the ship in itself, Blue Peter, 
So for people that don't know Blue Peter, again, we used to get these little badges, mm. which were little tokens that you'd give children who yes. either wrote something in yeah. or whatever. It was also the emblem yes. of the program. That ship was a ship that was, it's a real ship, yeah. that was created in the 1800s, sent out on a voyage of discovery. And what is a voyage of discovery? Mm -hmm. Some might say that's colonialism. Yeah. <laughs> so in the guise of that, yeah. The DNA of the program was yeah. based on that. Yeah. And here I am from a colonized country yeah. working for the master in essence. Yeah. And actually the master didn't want to get to know me no. as a, a young, intelligent, black Nigerian man. Mm -hmm. They wanted to get to know me based on how comfortable they felt with me. Yeah. So when you go through that meal and you don't really have a sense of who you are, it messes with your brain like you would not believe. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't understand this underlying anxiety I had. Mm. And I would say at points depression I mm. had through that show. Because I was like, why do I, I'm doing some amazing things. Why yeah. do I, why am I, why am I not enjoying it? Yeah. It's because in essence, I wasn't really being authentic. No. I'd be given a script yeah. written by someone else that didn't look like me. Yeah. I also didn't realize I was dyslexic till that time. I'd had wow. ADHD at that time. So I couldn't even memorize it the way everyone people were memorizing. I couldn't articulate it yeah. the same everyone else was the same way everyone yeah. else was articulating it. So I felt really dumb and stupid. Yet here I was, the first ever black man yeah. to host this incredible yeah. show, and I wasn't wearing it yeah. with pride. Yeah. I was almost a little ashamed of mm. it. I was almost a little scared of it. Mm. And fundamentally, I was, I was actually scared of my full potential. Yeah. And this is what comes for not celebrating success. Mm. This is what comes from not celebrating ourselves mm. at home. We say, yes, we're Yoruba, we love them, mm. you know, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. Yeah. But we're the first person to say, ah, people don't wait. <laughs> ah. Oh gosh. What's happened to your cheeks? Is everything out? okay? Is everything okay? <laughs> and that everything okay? They don't want you to explain that you're sad or you're no, feeling no, lonely no, or no. stuff like that. <laughs> it's a loaded question yeah. with no answer. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, you grew up in around an environment like this. Yeah. Also in an environment that teaches you. And if I'm honest, I think to a certain degree, our, our parents learn to be submissive in these environments. Yeah. It, that tells you just deal with your lot. It's just yeah. yeah. be grateful to have a job. Yeah. Be grateful to have a job. You yeah. keep your head down and yeah. do what you're told. Very much. And it was the fear. Don't ruffle any feathers. And even then, you know, through Blue Peter, my name, I was using my, my Christian name. Yes. Andrew yes. or Andy. Yeah. And that in, I was going to ask that yeah, question. Yeah, no, no, we'll go there. We'll go there. It's and, coming. And that, and, that, and that in itself was, you know, a construct created by, by my dad, you know, mm. like we're a Nigerian Catholic family. Um, my dad gave us all Catholic names based on our birthdays and the yeah. saints it was attached to. And the re even at school, the register was Andrew or Andy, not mm. Odumayo. Yeah. And for me, reclaiming that back in. Yeah. British lexicon mm -hmm. was the most empowering thing based on that breakdown because mm -hmm. I realized just how much I was really hiding. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And in the same way as your dad walking into those yeah. interviews yeah. with his English sounding name, yeah. for me, I wanted to fight the fight yeah. that Ayo, yeah. Akin Walere, yeah. is the name on British TV. Yeah. Ayo, Akin Walere. Yeah. Is the name on British TV yeah. doing amazing things on the BBC yeah. so that the ones that come after me are looking and saying, yo, I don't have to be anybody else. Yeah. But that is, you know, that is yeah. what I'm talking about. My, my constant mission now yeah. is just to take the pressure of that old self away yeah. and also the ego that comes with that old self okay. because that old self, the rewards were really interesting. Mm. The places you go, the mm. people you're on a table with. You're less, you're less threatening. You're less threatening. <clears throat> you know, you said the thing about the name. For that very reason, my parents didn't give us any shames. I love that. So their experience, my mum's Irene, my dad's Gregory. Mm. They come from the era, right, mm. where they went to missionary schools, etc. And for that reason, none of us were given English names. It's really powerful. Um, we were all given Bini names. Mm. Um, purely because it still didn't stop people from assuming we were non non black because yeah. the names they gave us were not, yeah. were not very descriptive yeah, I know, of, I know, I know, of I know. our heritage. But I think um talking about um going into Milk Fast, mm. uh, Milk First Productions and I guess the first documentary you decide to focus on mm. has something to do with 
police brutality, racism. What was the driving force behind that being the work you wanted to put out? Because I think for, we have listeners who live in Africa who mm. don't have this same struggle as we do, um, but in different ways, right? Because NSARS is real. Some of the political unrest we see across the continent is real. So there, there's always been this parallel between our identity and what happens with the forces that are supposed to be uh, protecting of us, right? Regardless of where in the world that you are. What was the catalyst to making you choose that as this is the project I wanted to put out? So let me just let you know that there's two people in our production. I mean, there's Alex, my business partner, who's a mm -hmm. black man from a small Yorkshire town mm -hmm. in the middle of nowhere. It's a small mining town up, up in Yorkshire in the north of England. And obviously, as a black man, grew up in Birmingham, mm -hmm. uh, England, and we both find ourselves in London yeah. together. He's a, he's a director. Mm -hmm. I'm a TV presenter. Mm -hmm. We're both incredibly creative. Yeah. And in the lockdown, we just said, look, We've been talking about this for a while. Should we start our own production company? Yeah. Because there's nothing worse than the depiction of ourselves being created by someone else. Mm. And it just so also happened that Alex's father was the first ever black policeman in Swinton. No way. He joined the, he's a, so Alex is from the Caribbean. Yeah. His dad's from St. Kitts. Okay. And they, you know, moved to his dad, part of the Windrush mm. generation, yeah. came to the UK at the age of eight. Wow. Very similar to when I came to yeah, the UK yeah. as well. So he, is a black man that talks like that, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> proper Yorkshire, yeah, you know. Yeah. And for me, there were so many levels in what we wanted to do mm. here. I wanted to bring cultural intelligence to our people. Yes. So we understood that this inner city London life isn't black culture in the UK. Yes. That black culture where I grew up in Birmingham yeah. is different. The Nigerians there too. Completely. Scotland, Completely. Wales, Yorkshire. And actually educate ourselves on who we are. Oh, yeah. Because we don't, yet again, we're not a monolith. Yeah. And actually Alex's experience as a black man up there Completely. and my experiences in the Midlands are very, very different. Yeah. So, and also tell British audiences that we're not a monolith. Yeah. White British audiences that we're as varied and, yeah. and, and different as white, the white population in Britain. Yeah. It's really, really important to stress this. Yeah. But also the story of a, a black man who stood on the front line of the miners' strike, mm. big historical moments in British history. Mm. Um, the Hillsborough disaster, which was a, a disaster that killed mm. so many people at a football stadium. Mm. Um, you know, the National Front marches in the UK. A black yeah. man was here. All the other people we see there are these white policemen yeah. who fought off. Yeah. He was the guy on the front line. Yeah. And talking about police brutality and how little it's changed even now, mm -hmm. even though they had a black man on their front line, yeah. was a real illustration of mm -hmm. how this country operates. And mm -hmm. for us, what we want to do with the production company is just lift the lid on who we feel we are as a, as a, as a population. Yeah. I'm very, it, it's like really important for me and Alex when we make programs mm -hmm. to say, what are we asking? What questions are we asking our audience? Yeah. What do we, and also, we, we see things through a different lens, both mm. black and white, right? Mm. We've grown up in predominantly white environments, yeah. but we're fundamentally black yeah. and our families yeah. celebrate who we are and yeah. we love that. But there's, there's always a double way of looking at things when we make these things. It's that what are we telling our people and what are we telling mainstream white populations? Mm. And that documentary basically symbolizes the kind of direction we really want to go with, with the documentaries we make. Mm. It's, it's to ask deeper questions about society, deeper questions about who we are as people, but also demystify the history of this country to understand that the people that built this country mm. need to be respected and need to be given their flowers. Yeah. And that's really important for us. So that's why yeah. we, we went down that route. And and I think to to echo your point, I think that's one of the inspirations behind the show for me. Because you know, when I look at the press that I've been in over the years mm. and I look at some of my friends and, and they're they're you know, media exposure, we can't tell the stories in the same way. We just cannot. Because <laughs> when you, the, the nuances are so varied mm. that you kind of understand that there is something educational about your journey. And so it's it's all about creating wonderlust. Yeah. 
Um, whereas amongst ourselves, and, and and I was I was sort of sat thinking, where do I go to if beyond Fella and Co, we don't actually have curators of our own stories yeah. that even we can look at, even of our peers, we can actually go, oh, is that what they did? Okay, I can learn from this. And so I hear you on wanting to create a voice um, that can be amplified, because essentially that's <clears throat> the crux of your work now, right? Um, speaking about, I guess, more on your work, but sort of taking a little bit of a diversion mm -hmm. into um, money. Yeah. Okay. We don't talk about it enough? No, I was literally having this conversation with my sister today. She's literally just she's flying up. She's flown yeah. in from America. And we, talk, we, had, we, went, we went, went to the pub yeah. last night to have a drink. And yeah. I said, what are you doing with your money, man? I said to her, what are you doing with your money? Yeah. Like, you don't do it enough. No, we don't talk about money enough. Mm -hmm. But I would like to. Yeah. Um, because a portion of this show, hopefully, is about us also normalizing that conversation. Um, but helping people navigate. Entrepreneurship isn't easy. It's not a one-way street. Um, being in the media, everyone assumes you're probably making millions. Millions! Because you're on TV every day. Um, and I know for some people who are in the media, not everyone is confident to say, actually, I was a salaried employee and I was only earning X. And perhaps I didn't understand the opportunities that I could have had to amplify my earnings or social media wasn't what it was now where I had other opportunities. Now, how do you make money as somebody like you? Okay, so let's start with Blue Peter. And this is the biggest misconception. You work on a BBC, you're making lots of money. What the BBC did to me at the time, because they love doing this thing when they pluck you out of obscurity, it means yeah. you're too young to know what's going on, <laughs> um, is that I started behind the camera. Mm. So structurally, I couldn't get a big pay rise mm. because it was overinflated if yeah. I was to be a presenter. Yeah. So what they did was give me a little pay rise from, mm. I'm, I'm talking I was the T-boy yeah. to going in front of the camera. Yeah. It was that quick. So I was literally on pretty much minimum wage for my first year. And incrementally it got better, but by the time I left it, it yeah. wasn't really that much. Yeah. It's all it's probably the same as someone by the end of it that was work that would be working full time in as a manager in a supermarket. But you had put in more years exactly. of experience, experience in that job. Right. Okay. But the way I work with money, realistically, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's really important is I actually operate on, on the level that I haven't got much money. Mm. So one of the things that I loved and one of the positives of being on Blue Peter is that even though I wasn't on much money, I wasn't paying for much mm. because you've got the BBC blanket, yeah. like food allowance. Yeah. You know, when you travel, everything's paid for all yeah. this kind of stuff. So every bit of time I had, I was just putting it away. Mm. And that's how I actually got to afford my house yes. like or my place by, yeah. by the seaside. Because I was just putting money away mm. when I didn't. Instead of being like, let's go out. Let's go out. What's that? Like, Patsy, you know, <laughs> stop, I mean, we, hey, uh, plenty you know, spending. Plenty spending. Exactly. <laughs> but think about it. Like, yeah. we are, we are a culture. Of a, based on escapism. Oh, we like to enjoy. We like to enjoy. What? It's You're the even more so. It's the craziest <laughs> it's rhetoric the I've ever it's the seen. Of and actually, people feel yeah. guilty yeah. if they're not seen to be enjoying. Yeah. But it's a different Jay kind of. It's not it's a giant. <laughs> <laughs> but the, my thing is, yeah. If in five years' time, yeah. You have got nothing to show for it. Yeah. Why are you standing on a yacht in Dubai uh, popping champagne? Pop it. <laughs> Because you think you need to keep up to something yeah. that you're really not. Yeah. And what that evolved to when I left Blue Peter, and actually that was a yearly contract, yeah. so it would be what you class as a salary job mm. in many respects, and you don't get that much in TV, yeah. is that I was a freelancer. Mm. And my, my life has basically gone from being a TV presenter to trying to hone in on and maximise, actually, I think mm. that's a better word, on who I am and what I have to offer. Mm. And from then I realized that actually, am I gonna sit here waiting for the phone to call? Mm. Or am I gonna actually try and create a brand mm. based on the things we've been talking about? Yeah. And yeah. 
I, I realize now growing up that a lot of people don't have that confidence, but yeah. I don't know whether it's something inherently inside of me mm -hmm. from when I was a kid yeah. to where I am now, mm -hmm. but I've always never wanted to just settle for my lot mm -hmm. because I see touch wood, this long life ahead of me mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be one thing, yeah. but also I was never taught that it doesn't have to be one thing. Mm -hmm. One thing I started realizing when I, hung out with a lot more privileged people than I was, was this inherent confidence that mm. they had to just turn their hands mm. to something else. Yeah. You know, people that go to university to study the classics. Like, yeah. What on earth does that give Literature. you? Literature. 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 And then you know it, they're the editor of the Times. And you're like, yeah. what? How are the... Okay. Philosophy. And, then, and your parents are saying, you have to do this because if you yeah. do that, you can do that, and you yeah. can go into medicine or something yeah. like that. And you're saying, but these people... <laughs> I love it. I got something like that. <laughs> These yeah. people have studied classics and, yeah. and they're now yeah. head journalists at The Guardian or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And when I got that, I was like, do you know what? What if I start doing what they're doing mm. a little bit and mm. actually start taking pride in the fact that I was the only person to yeah. do this, this and this? I'll yeah. tell you a thing. Basically, after I left Lupita and mm. I went through that mental slump, mm. I actually disconnected from TV. I actually wrote a lecture mm. called Finding Your Voice and I traveled around universities with it because I realized I actually had this intellectual property mm. that I wasn't really... Uh, manifesting and using yeah. because it'd been knocked out of me mm. while I was on Blue Peter to be this very simple, mm. funny, bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. Oh my god, man. I was gonna say to you, how did you navigate the hi all the time? The like, as your default, but I'm, I'm quite an energe energetic person yeah. anyway. So, like, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely ready to be a, a decently yeah. happy person, and that wasn't too bad. But they want you to ramp it up, and mm. I think that was some of it. I was like, this isn't, this isn't funny, this yeah. isn't interesting, like, yeah, also. This is a very bland segment. I didn't like making <laughs> stuff. So like, why are you making me make stuff? You yeah. Know? But also what I didn't realize is all those presenters had that trajectory in their head. If I do Blue Beetle, I'll do yeah. this, i this. I didn't have that. Mm. It was a joy to do it. Yeah. But I did think, oh, what's next? Yeah. Because there was no one to help me with that. Yeah. There was no one. People would always ask me, I'll go That's to meetings it. and they'd say, um, so out of curiosity, yeah. who... Who, who do you admire in the industry? Oh my God, that question gets me. But also, yeah. I'd answer it because I'd tell them what I thought they wanted to hear. Yeah. But no one looked like me. No. No one had my journey. Mm. So how can I admire someone's career? I can admire their success for sure. Yeah. But I know and you know it's not that there's not, it's not, I'm not going to go <laughs> left, left, right, up, up the stairs to yeah. the next floor, to the third floor. Yeah. You know it's not going to happen to me. Yeah. So don't ask me that question because... The answer my confidence said would confidence self would have said was, "There's no one like me. I'm yeah. actually creating this as I go along, and actually this is potentially where I see myself going. Yes. But I don't know how to get there." Yeah. And that's the answer I should have given. Mm. Now, as you know, a, a professional, I've definitely got that in my locker. Yeah. But back to your original question: How do I make my money now? Mm. So I split my time between my driver is TV, right? So. Um, I've just done a new deal at The Athletic. I used to work for the Premier League. Mm -hmm. So that's sport, 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 sport. That's my basic. Mm -hmm. On the back end of that, I do public speaking. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm off to Peru in October to speak, uh, to do a keynote speech uh, in front of the Latin Theatre Association about reimagining post-colonial spaces. Mm -hmm. um, I also host events. Mm -hmm. And also we've got the production company. Yeah. What became very evident early on is that to be a creative in this environment, you can't rely on one stream of income. Forget about it. You, you're just wasting <laughs> Forget your time. Forget about it. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to sit in an office and work for someone yeah. else. Yeah. So what I've, I've realized after Blue Peter is that I had small contracts here and there. Mm. So actually, how do I fill the other time on? Yeah. And I guarantee you, if you look at any successful actor, mm. musician, presenter, mm. Their mainstream of cash might be what you see them for, yeah. but look at their portfolio of work yeah. and where they're going. It's yeah. no coincidence we're seeing actors now starting their own production company mm. because they've earned the right mm. to get the money yeah. and create the stories they want to create. Mm. Instead of some bob bobs they're saying, this is, <laughs> this is what we want from this our boss or yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. But you have to play the game. Yeah. And this is the funny thing. I, I literally messaged my friend today and I said, you know, We'll all be we'll all be sort of navigating various spaces. We'll all be trying to figure mm. out where the meat comes from. But what game are you playing? Yes. Ask yourself that deep, real question. Mm. What game are you playing? 
Are you playing a game which means you're thinking prosperity for your future family? Yeah. Are you playing a game where you're saying, I'm very selfish, I just want to live this life for mm. myself? Are you playing a game to saying, I want to change the narrative so the family that come after me or the children that come after yeah. me are sorted out? Yeah. You have to be honest with yourself in that. Mm. And those are the questions I started asking myself about seven or eight years ago. Yeah. Where am I going? What game am I playing? Mm. I know I'm a great communicator. Yeah. So that takes you into so many different places. Mm. That takes you in TV. That takes yeah. you to podcasts. That takes you to public speaking. Yeah. That takes you to hosting. That takes you to pitching ideas in front of TV execs. Mm. That's five different things. The streamline is TV presenting. Yeah. The creativity is all those wonderful things as well uh, uh, around it. So that's fundamentally how I make my money. Amazing. Thank you. So which bar should we all go to? <laughs> so we can meet the BBC exec. <laughs> Which bar is it? I'm out Everybody of it. listen. No. I'll be honest with you. Like, <laughs> one, one thing I realized, yeah. and you, you said the word outlier ages ago, mm -hmm. in, in, earlier in this interview, is that I, I realized that I'm an outlier. Mm. And for me, I'm actually unplugged from the system. Mm. I'm unplugged from the matrix. Yeah. I like it that way. Mm. Because I go to people organically based mm. on, is this an important person to connect with? Yeah. Not because I feel like I have to. Mm. And I'm very grateful that I've been hired by the BBC on different yeah. occasions in a year, yeah. but I'm not different. Yeah, the whole BBC, all, all no, the but, but, but that was when I was young. Now <laughs> it's just sports. So even last year, let me, let me look at yeah. this. Like this is the real thing. And when we talk about demystifying the yeah. industry, it's like actors. An actor might do a multi-million dollar mm. film, right? Don't get me wrong; they're fed for yeah. years to come. Yeah, but then I might not work for that re the rest of that year. Mm. They might not work for two or three years. Yeah, even big, big, big actors they don't yeah. get that regular yeah. thing. And, and that's why they're all striking now as well. There's, yeah. there's, there's a big conversation around yeah. the amount of work that's available to people. Yeah. I worked for the BBC last year. I did the Commonwealth Games. I did the mm. Winter Olympics. I'm going to work for the BBC for a year. Yeah. So I'm not going to wait for them to tell me and yeah. say, hey, we're Come ready back. for you. Yeah. I'm going to say, look, I have to earn my crust. Yeah. The athletic, which I've started, is a wonderful opportunity. Mm. And I'm still doing what I love. Yeah. And it's about taking that validation away from spaces mm. that don't see you. Mm. The BBC sees me in various ways. Yeah. How they see me next year, I don't know. But I'm also not in control of that. Yeah. So actually, I'm going to nurture new relationships. Okay. I'm going to venture a, a bit further out yeah. and see what else is there. There was, I don't know if it's Sidney Poitier that said this. Um, so Sidney Poitier, one of my favorite actors, mm. first ever black man to, to win an Oscar. He was an actor all his life and then mm. he switched to directing. Yeah. And I think there's a documentary about him but he, i think he's i can't remember what he said and i'm paraphrasing and i get this horribly wrong mm. but he said i just realized i'm useful elsewhere mm. Mm. when you realize you're useful elsewhere yeah you stop buffering the ego of the past self and yes. you say oh yeah i'm a good communicator yeah so what i've worked in films i've been produced for all my life yeah. people have directed me all my life why, why can't i direct the film yeah. why but, can't i but i think it's also the permission to see yourself differently yeah. but no one's going to give you that this is it. No one's going to give you that. You mentioned building your brand mm. and being aware mm. of your other talents and how that has shaped how you navigate your career moving mm. forward. Now, there's something around success. Sure. You've seen different shades of it. Mm. You've experienced it in front of the camera, mm. you've experienced it from a professional mm. standpoint, you've experienced it from an athletic standpoint. Mm. How would you define success? It's really hard. Today? Yeah, because when I was younger, success was just chopping, being on whatever <laughs> you could be on, what, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, at the age of 40 now, success for me looks like just having my life in check mm. understanding when i'm burning out yeah understanding my power mm. understanding I, I tell you a story i went to the f you know my, my boss probably would be angry if i said this but i said to myself do you know what they're inviting me to do this job mm. and instead of being grateful yeah. i will be grateful because it's a wonderful mm. opportunity but i'm also going to put them on the spot yeah you flip it on its head a mm. little bit let me ask them why you've come for me yeah instead of being knocking out to it. Yeah. And that's one of the most empowering things mm. you'll ever feel in your life. Mm. Why me? Just tell me, yeah. can we have that chat? Why yeah. me? What, 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 what do you think I can bring to your company? Mm. Instead of you justifying yourself and say, this is what I can give mm. you. Why me? Because mm. I've picked you. And when you flip that on its head, those little wins are 
incredible yeah. dose, incredible mm-hmm. doses of success because I've evolved from who I was. Mm. But you have the permission to do that. Please don't go to your first job and ask you to have your hand. <laughs> Why me? No, I mean, what I'm, I'm like, saying is, thanks. yeah, but, what, but <laughs> I, and I, I think you're spot on because yeah. what I've realized is after the, and, and, and this is part of, part of congratulating oneself and mm. patting oneself on the back when you've done a good job mm. is that you look back and say, I've earned the opportunity to yeah. do this. I'm not, I, and that's why I said success back then versus now are two very different things. Yeah. The confidence I have now is to say, yes, I've earned this, mm. but also how can we work together? Yeah. And also success has been in those environments where I feel like I can flourish. Yeah. I tell you what, my my boss is queer mm. in the world of football. He's mm. a gay man with two children in football. Yeah. In this day and age, mm. someone gave me a book my first day I was working in this place. Uh, it's brilliant. I think it's Ghanaian. Carl mm. Anker is one of the guys we work with. Yeah. Gave me this beautiful book of poetry celebrating successful, powerful black men. Yeah. I was like, I'm in the right space. Amazing. And I chose to go there I, because... I was seen fundamentally. And for me, that's what success looks like. Being in environments that nurture who I am. And I'm also able to produce my best work. Beautiful. Last one. What do you wish you knew? What, from then to now? From being, ah, it's hard. That's a really tough question. I know, I know, I do this. What do I, I wish I knew? I wish I knew that it's okay to say I haven't got it figured out. Mm. I wish I knew it's okay not to have a plan. Mm. I remember I just called my dad, what's your plan? <laughs> uh, okay, what I'm going to do is, uh, I wish I just knew and said, you know what, I don't know. Yeah. Because the road I'm about to tread there is no blueprint for yeah. it. Yeah. And I'm sort of making it up as I go along, mm. but I'm actually quite savvy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually quite smart and intelligent. Yeah. I will make some mistakes along the way for sure, mm. because there's no one who smashed it mm. that hasn't made mistakes. Yeah. But I wish I knew it was okay to say, I don't know. Yeah. And how many people do we see? Hey, do you know how to tell? Yeah, yes. you need to go left and right <laughs> and then turn around the corner and, and then you, you, you'll see the traffic like, you don't know what you're talking about, do you? Yeah. No. Yeah, we're not we're not allowed. Not we're not to allowed know. to. We're not allowed. Everyone starts from somewhere. You have to start. Everyone from somewhere. starts from somewhere. Yeah. So that's what I wish I knew. It's okay to say I'm got it. I'm sorted and figured out. Ayo. Thank you. Oh my god, this has been great. Thank you. Thank you. This has been me. great. Thank you for. Um, I feel like I've been to therapy. Ah! <laughs> I've, uh, I have my this effect on people. I, I don't need my therapist this week. Thank you very much. I have this effect on people. Um, Thank you. But Maybe you, this is my new my new life. <laughs> no, but you, you have built an incredible career that I hope you wake up every day being proud of your growth and your achievements. Um, but most I'm excited about what else you are offering to the world. Um, I am honored that you kindly opened up your heart oh, you. and shared your story it. on our platform. Mm-hmm. Um, where can everyone find you? Yeah, I'm on the Athletic Football Podcast literally Mondays to Thursday and also uh, Premier League productions uh, across Africa, across Nigeria. Um, I'm there, the guy bringing you the Premier League weekend warm-up every Friday um, with my team as well. So, yeah, it's great that Nigerians actually can see me as well and anyone across the diaspora yeah. can see me as well. So, yeah, I work for the Premier League and the Athletic now. That's the that's the day job, football, football, football. Let's do it. Social media? Yeah, I'm a, my name is Ayo Akimolere on, on Instagram and also I'm on LinkedIn. I'm only yeah. just really figuring out Twitter, but same, Ayo Akimo. Yeah. Um, find me on all those platforms, man. Come say hello. Amazing. Thank you so much for being on this week's episode of Third Culture Africans. Be sure to follow us on social media because the world doesn't think as many of you listen to our show if they looked at our Instagram profile. Like, follow, share with a friend, um, and let's discuss. And until next week, thank you so much.